thank you everybody for being here because we all know bombay traffic so you all have made it on time so thank you so very much for that so ladies and gentlemen warm welcome to each one of you here at the second edition of coraverse unlocking knowledge for impact this evening is dedicated to understanding and exploring the profound impact of shared knowledge i am vyoma parihar and it's my pleasure to take you through the upcoming sessions where we delve deeper into the digital trust consumer behavior and corporate social responsibility to officially kick off our evening please everybody join me in welcoming gurmeet singh the general manager of cora for asia pacific and middle east everybody gurmeet brings a profound understanding of uh, digital landscapes and will set the perfect tone for tonight's discussions everybody with a big round of applause let's welcome on stage gurmeet singh hello everyone thank you for the warm introduction um you know me uh, you know my name by now um i joined uh, cora in 2019 as the first employee in india and in the last 5 years you know we've grown tremendously and today's event is all about you know sharing the learnings which we've had uh, in the last 5 years not only as cora but also as marketers and i see so many wonderful marketers here across uh, industries a very very warm welcome to uh, all of you thank thanks for finding time to be here and uh, hopefully you will find this event uh, meaningful if we were to describe uh, cora in one sentence what would that be um, i would say it would be the best place to find answers do you guys agree okay cool so cora is a 15 year old company uh started by a gentleman called Adam De Angelo who's the current CEO as well um in india like i said we are about 5 years old and from india we handle various markets in asia like uh, middle east we handle southeast asia we handle australia new zealand and we also handle small businesses across the world from india so we have a strong team out here Uh, we have teams in delhi bombay and bangalore and uh, cora works is happening in all the three cities and this is one flagship event you can say which is happening in uh, mumbai so warm welcome again i would like to give you more context on you know why this event so like i said over the last 5 years we've had you know so much learning which we've accumulated so we are using this platform uh through two panels in which you would have like cora people on one side and you would have clients and agencies on the other side and they are going to discuss real time uh stories on you know how they kind of you know adopted cora and how did they kind of you know find ways of maximizing impact for their respective brands so hopefully that's going to be like real real learning for all of us um uh, they would be sharing obviously first hand knowledge so that you know goes without saying the second thing uh, purpose of this event is also that you know over the last 5 years we've had some fantastic uh, advertisers uh and in the last we want to recognize uh advertisers who've been with us in the last year you know particularly the ones whose campaigns have had the maximum impact last year so we'll be uh, honoring and uh the advertisers who've created the most impactful uh, campaigns last year and the marketing brains uh, behind them we are also some of you would know that cora launched a second app about a year ago uh, called po p o e po is an ai app and we are lucky to have uh, vinay pande amongst us today vinay is the chief revenue officer of cora he is based in the us and he is amongst us today vinay would be uh, having a keynote address today uh, after this and he would be uh, sharing you know how marketers can leverage ai and uh, we look forward to that session as well 
Uh, we also spoke about social impact. Uh, so Cora for good. Uh, we have Access Life amongst us uh, today. Access Life uh, is an organization which is supporting uh, children who are suffering from cancer. So we'll have Kavita who will kind of, you know, uh, share more about it with us. Uh, and we look forward to that session as well. Uh, in the end, I would like to thank Social Samosa and Team Hitesh in particular, uh, who've you know, put together a great event uh, in Delhi and this one out here in Mumbai and you know, hopefully one in Bangalore as well. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, the team in Cora that has worked so hard for this event and you know, hopefully all of you find this uh, meaningful. And last but not the least, all of you wonderful people for finding time today and coming out here. So let's go ahead with the event and see what it has in store for us. Thank you very much. Everyone, our first panel tonight focuses on uh, building brand loyalty in digital world, as I said. This panel will explore how brands can foster lasting relationships with consumers in an increasingly digital marketplace. To kickstart the conversation, uh, the first panel discussion, uh, my question would be to you, Kaushik. We, uh, a minute ago, I just spoke about a lot of data that's available, um, a lot of platforms, a lot of content, you know, we're spoiled with choices here. And um, with all of it, what is your favored approach of uh, crafting marketing mix strategy, specifically that's tailored for digital platforms? Well, like you said, uh, we are spoiled for choices. But uh, it is not easy, or not, and as a result, it is not easy to pick uh, and just jump into a marketing mix and decide on the channel of uh, marketing. I think there are some steps that everyone should keep in mind so that you don't miss out on the important things while deciding on the correct channel of marketing. Uh, to start with, I would say you have to, as a marketeer, set clear objectives for the campaign when you're starting or thinking of a campaign. And when I say objective, a lot depends on that because whether you have to be very clear as a marketeer and you have to discuss with your team whether this campaign is done for generating sales or create brand awareness or maybe create engagement. And all three will have very, very different routes. Uh, so this being the starting point, I would say the next step would be to set the correct metrics once you decide on the objectives. Now, obviously, uh, metrics can be different things, and uh, most of you will know that whether it's a CTR or a CPA, or even for brand awareness, you do certain things to measure the, the, the brand lift, and so on. Uh, the third and very important step, I would say, is to uh, find the, or target the right audience. Uh, uh, the audiences can be divided, obviously, uh, demographically or psychographically, uh, or even uh, uh, the way that you would like to reach out to the right kind of age or gender. Uh, a lot will depend. Now, when all of that is done, then from the product or the company point of view, also have to clearly define or decide on the, uh, the messaging that you would like to do. And uh, that can be, obviously, uh, uh, the messaging that you decide uh, is actually the next step. Uh, after you decide on all these three, four steps, then you s start deciding on the channel that you will be using. And while, doing the, while deciding on the channels, obviously there are various ways and that stems from the fact what is the objective set and all. It can be very targeted uh, performance marketing channels or it can be uh, email marketing or even content marketing. And in content marketing is one area where we use platforms like Sco like Cora uh, as a brand. Uh, and there are various other ways like uh, even continuously investing in search engine optimization or things, or social media marketing and stuff like that. Once all of that is done and once the campaign is now decided as to where we will execute, now comes the creation of your own assets, like whether you create a landing page or the, or the lead journey or, or a conversion journey and stuff like that. And then you allocate budget and then you analyze it at the end of the campaign. So I think these seven, eight steps I would say are very key in uh, or, the, or, or kind of important steps that one as a marketer should not miss out on when they decide on uh, creating a marketing mix. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kaushik. I think that was quite a comprehensive strategy, you know, right from setting the precise objective to identifying your target audience to, you know, putting that app content there and then distributing it on relevant platforms. So I think that's quite an elaborate blend that you have there. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. First of all, thank you, Aparna and Kaushik, for joining us this evening. As we embark into this journey of understanding how brands are building loyalty and trust in a digital first world, I'm sure your expertise will inspire, educate, and provoke thought among all the attendees. So taking the conversation forward with you, Aparna, Natural Diamond Council, or NDC, is an organization that represents the diamond industry, particularly focusing on the natural diamonds. While a lot of users rely on visiting stores when it comes to making choices on luxury categories, we'd like to understand how has NDC adapted its digital marketing strategies to build awareness among consumers in today's digital first environment? Hello, everybody. Um, so NDC is a digital first organization, uh, especially since our brand refresh. Our website and our social media are our primary forms of communication. Um, so everything we do is very digital oriented. We also recognize that especially since the pandemic, uh, a lot of jewelry discovery and also purchase intent decisions are made through online discovery. So our consumers are present on this platform. And hence it's critical that we are also, we also have a very robust presence on, on digital uh, media itself. And we actually do this through three different ways. Uh, firstly, we try and create desire for natural diamonds amongst consumers by creating content and promoting content around the origin or the history or sustainability aspects of the industry or even pop cultural references. Um, secondly, we uh, try and use rich visual media to showcase the craftsmanship and beauty of the jewelry itself. And thirdly, we educate consumers. So for that, platforms like Cora really help us, where we are trying to uh, maybe dispel any myths, misconceptions, answer consumer queries, and give them the right information, the right uh, data. So that's, that's where platforms like Cora come into play for us. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really interesting to know about the approach which you have taken for the brand to build its awareness in today's digital environment. And secondly, the way you have positioned your brand by, uh, you know, uh, basically emphasizing on the beauty and um, emotional significance of natural diamonds. Uh, your insights gave, it, gave me a lot of clarity to help, you understand, help your brand understand better. And of course, I mean about your mission and objective as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aparna. I, I think you have a lot of uh, useful information out there on your business profile. And I think it's going to help me shop better for my next diamond jewelry. <laughs> okay, coming back to you, Kaushik. Um, we'd like to learn more on Manify by Tata Capital. You know, if you can help us understand Manify and also how has Cora played a pivotal role in launching its brand campaign, its activation, basically. To start with, let me give a background as to what is Manify because Tata Capital is loan as a lending company and we give loans across the value chain, uh, whether it is retail, SME, corporate. However, Manify is nothing about lending. So Manify, when we, as an organization, we also have a wealth management business and we realize that there is a sweet spot which is lying where uh, the young individual who is joining maybe the workforce and has a disposable income has surplus money, they are digitally savvy, they are mobile first, and all of that coming together, they would like to also start their investing journey quickly. Their, uh, the, the risk taking appetite is much higher than the older generation. And that's where we find, found the sweet spot and we launched a kind of a personal finance management app called Manify by Tata Capital. Uh, it's, it is a mobile first uh, product. Uh, it helps, it has very many interesting features starting from financial planning to budget uh, planning or maybe expense tracking and all that. And all of that helps an individual to plan his or her investment better. Having said that, how Cora helped us? Cora definitely, I mean for a first I mean, or a new brand like a Manify, uh, Cora definitely gave us the authority or to, for want of a better word, 
uh, maybe uh, thought leadership to, to a great extent, uh, where we were present in the right time, right place, answering customers' queries, and as a result, uh, the, the, the brand recall of Manify went up quite a lot. And that, I would say, is one of the, um, the single largest gain that Manify would have got from a platform which is dependable and user-generated like Quora. Uh, that apart, I think there are obviously the other advantages that come with being present on Quora, like content marketing. And uh, we as a brand use Quora as a place where we write content and we create our backlink so that organic content ca uh, traffic comes to the website. It also gives you an opportunity to have a direct interaction with uh, people who are actually looking out for investments or for uh, similar products that we offer. So it is reaching out to the right audience at the right time. Uh, that apart, obviously, we have also used Quora for uh, targeted performance marketing. Uh, and in overall, everything would have culminated in increasing our brand awareness. So I think uh, we have, it's been a great symbiotic relationship and we have also benefited as Cora would have benefited from the relationship. <laughs> yes, yes. We, uh, we of course know that the campaign did fare exceptionally well. Um, we, we drove a very great CTR, effective cost per clicks. And I think what played an important role here, Kaushik, is that you know you have this always-on approach, where you've leveraged Quora as a platform, all the ad formats. You've, um, you know, across most of your loan offerings, you have activated campaigns. So, and 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 there was a lot of learning also in place. So I think that's something that has really helped uh, with the performance of uh, Moneyfy specifically, and. I think it's also helping with a lot of brand searches, driving organic traffic, not only to your business profile page, where you already have uh, 12 million plus content views, but also to your website. So yeah, it, it was a commendable campaign, I must say. To add to that, we also have a, a large amount of blogs that we write on a regular basis, and we have a blog section, but we now we have started doing an in forward we, and future we would like to promote our blogs on Quora so that uh, it gives us the right audience back to our website. Certainly. I think we'll speak and how you can use Po for this. We will talk. That too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kaushik. <laughs> Over to you. Thank you, Priyanka and Kaushik for sharing the insights with us. We all know and most of us in this room will agree that Quora is a mid-funnel platform and it sits in between the awareness stage and decision-making stage of the marketing funnel. While a lot of users come to the platform to seek information, uh, read answers, and consume content over various topics, I think the platform also provides an equal opportunity for businesses to engage with potential customers uh, who are actively researching and considering the options. So in that context, we would like to understand how has NDC utilized Quora to engage with potential users and what strategies have worked in fostering meaningful interactions and building brand trust on the platform? Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, Quora is a middle funnel platform. And we also are actually, we are a category marketer. We do not sell product. So we also operate in the middle funnel where we are trying to talk to consumers who are in the consideration phase of their buying decision. Um, and that's where Quora kind of helps us because it helps us talk to that audience directly. Uh, last year, we launched a, fa a report called the Diamond Facts Report. It's about a 50-page report, factual, talking about uh, myths, misconceptions about the diamond industry. And we use Quora as an extension of our promotions for that report. Uh, so we used a combination of Quora ads, and we also identified the top questions that people have asked in our category. And we tried to give them answers around ethical sourcing. Are diamonds really ethically sourced? Uh, how sustainable are they? And also maybe differences about between lab-grown diamonds and natural diamonds. So we'd answered the kind of questions that consumers have, which were the most asked for questions on your platform as well. And uh, it, the, the results were honestly there for everybody to see because our video ad campaign, which tried to, as I said, educate people more about diamonds, uh, we ended up getting about one and a half million views, and um, our 
Our profile itself had about 3.6 million content views. Um, and our promoted answers delivered about, again, another 3.5 million views with the 6% uh, CTR, which was quite big. And we ended up draw, drawing about 20,000 people to our website just to our report. And this was only over a period of four weeks. So it was a really effective campaign in a very short period of time. And it really helped us get the right audience who are considering this purchase and giving them the right information at the right time. Additionally, another very important objective of NDC is to be the industry authority or in general the authority on everything natural diamonds. Uh, in fact, our publishing destination is the, our website is the number one publishing destination for everything natural diamonds. And Cora helped us uh, create this aura of thought leadership uh, amongst a different audience set to what we usually would be reaching out to. And uh, yeah, I think overall it's been a very effective campaign for us. I must say that the brand has done a remarkable job when it comes to utilizing the platforms to its best. Uh, right from identifying the top and the relevant questions in and around the category and aiming to educate the users on different subjects such as explaining the differences between natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds, ethical sourcing, etc. I think the content seen on the platform are very informative. Uh, what I have seen is that it's not just plain text you know, within the answers. I think the answers also have a lot of infographics and sources of references added, which actually brings a lot of clarity and information to the users who are consuming it. So uh, yeah, thank you for sharing my insights. I think it will help you know, all of us to identify and build the right approach, um, specifically on how we can leverage business profile and build thought leadership on the platform. Well. Uh, uh, this actually, uh, we have to come to the end of the discussion because, uh, you know, we are... Also, now that we know that the highest questions are around relationships, <laughs> Diamond should do well. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I think, uh, you know, throughout our dialogue today, we have actually explored, you know, multiple topics ranging from different marketing strategies to consumer insights and so on. But uh, it gives me immense pleasure to share that Cora as a platform has been able to help these brands create breakthrough engagements and thoughtful contribution for its user. So yeah, I mean, we are really honored to have you here uh, today. And thank you once again for joining us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to delve into the theme of trust and safety in the digital realm, it's equally important to remember our social responsibilities as well. This brings us to a very special collaboration that Cora is incredibly proud of, our partnership with Access Life Assistance Foundation. This partnership stems from Cora's core mission to share and grow the world's knowledge, not just online, but also through impactful community engagement. We believe in supporting initiatives that make a real difference in people's lives, especially those who are most in need. Tonight, we have a unique opportunity to hear directly from the heart of this mission, Kavita Shetty, General Manager, Program Development and Outreach. She's here with us. Under her leadership, Access Life provides essential support and care to children battling cancer. Everybody, with a big round of applause, let's welcome on stage Kavita Shetty. Thank you, everyone who are present here for being here. And thank you for this opportunity. Special thanks to Neha, Vinay, and Gurmeet for making this happen. So it's been always a privilege when it comes to an opportunity to talk about Access Life. So Access Life is a home away from home for families who are battling childhood cancer. Their kids are battling childhood cancer and they come from remote villages. To give you a very overview brief about how we started a decade ago, it was two friends, our founders, Ankit Dave and Girish Nair, who used to volunteer at hospitals during their free time, distribute fruits, vegetables, and during their one round to the hospital wards, they were all prepared visiting the cancer wards, adult wards. It was one day when they went into the pediatric ward. 
they were taken aback because till then even they were not aware that cancer is also related to kids or children. It was only that adults who get cancer. That's when the first thought was, they saw all around, so coming back, they saw the entire ward with kids all around, uh, sleeping on newspapers, rags, and their chemotherapy bags on windowsills. The first thought what came in was, let's donate cots and chemotherapy stands. And that's when they approached the doctors, like we are ready to donate. Now the first thing what the doctors said was, this would land us to treating less kids. So it was a big surprise for them because if it was more cots, there were less place for the kids to get treated. And they also gave them a scenario about the hospital corridors and the footpath outside, like if in, if in Mumbai, if you go around Tata Memorial Hospital. That's when the thought came and it was discussed, like the first support what these families need is shelter. So during their chemotherapy treatment, when there is a gap, and these families come with a very handful of amount, when they come from remote villages, when the doctors say that you have, your child is facing with something else, some other illness, you need to go to a bigger hospital. And in Mumbai, we all are aware, it's very difficult to find a space. And that's when they are just at the Mumbai roads, platforms, or sometimes railway platforms. Now the doctors, the biggest challenge for the doctors is like usually during their treatment, they are not aware whether the family comes down, comes back for the second round of uh, chemotherapy. So when they come in, as I said, they feel it's only eight to 10 days that they'll be back to their villages. But when the doctors tell them that it is not less than four months to six months, their child will be undergoing the treatment. And this is the first challenge what they face when they come here. Now, coming back to Girish and Ankit, that's the first thought they thought, okay, let us buy a flat and, you know, just shelter a few families. And it was not easy for them to get a place because, yes, the social myth of cancer again being contagious or airborne, they didn't get any place very easily. They got a first place in 2014, a rented bungalow in Chembur, where they welcomed, June 14th it was, so we are very close to completing a decade. They welcomed eight families. And today, we are with 140 families all around India, and go very soon going to add 30 plus families in the coming two months. So as these families came in, it was like only shelter and nutrition because when the child is battling cancer, he needs a well-balanced diet. So we started with only shelter and nutrition. But it was almost a week when they started traveling to the hospitals where they realized it was not easy to travel with the small babies. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And that's when it was a, again a challenge, like how do we help them? and. Uh, very close donor who came ahead and donated as a van for these families to travel. And that's when we realized that transportation also will add to this impact. And today we have got six vehicles and all around our centers we have the facility of transportation. So the little kids with the families need not travel in the public transport. Now adding to this three support, what we realized is we are missing out on the mental health of the caregivers. So we, the focus was entirely on the child recovering, but equally the caregivers' mental health is very, very important. That's when we added counseling and non-formal education. Again, why did we add education was uh, being here for six months, not being in touch with the, the studies and education. The child, when they went back, they were very stubborn to go back to the school. And that's when we added a non-formal education where our teachers actually conduct a baseline for the ch child. And then for the next six months, they are in touch with their daily curriculum. And of course, counseling, as I said, that is very important because 
For the caregivers, the stress is a big mental challenge when their child is go undergoing the treatment because back home they have their siblings and their senior, uh, senior citizens who are dependent on them. So again, our counselors have a one-on-one -on -one talk with these families and support them. So coming back to our centers, we have extended from Mumbai. Mumbai, we have three centers. We are at Chembur. And from there, we have gone to Pune, Manipal, Chandigarh, Bangalore, and in Ahmedabad. So at places like Manipal, it's the doctors who have called us. It's not we go and pick up the families. It's the medical social worker at the hospital who approaches us when they do the due diligence that the family is in need, actual need, and they call us and we welcome them in our uh, centers. I would request all of you, like, if make time, do visit our centers. It's not always an NGO and a donation connected. It's also the time. These little brave hearts really need to be involved. The smile, what they have, even if when they come back from chemotherapy, is something which we all carry with us. And they come and try it on us. Whatever the doctors try on them, they come and try it on us. So they are that innocent. And they deserve to live a life. Their parents, their caregivers deserve the support, the strength what they need. We need to show them that they are not alone during their journey of cancer. And all these services are free of cost. So let us all make a difference. Give every child a moment to live and every family a support and strength what they need. So no family abandons treatment just because of this support. Thank you. Continuing our exploration of digital themes, our next panel will discuss the evolution of consumer behavior in the digital age. This session will delve into how digital technologies and platforms are reshaping consumer expectations and behaviors. Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to Koravas. My name is Nathan Patel. I head the business for India. Along with me, I have Disha Thakkar, client partner at Kora in Mumbai. We are here today to discuss on the evolution of consumer behavior in digital age. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce you to three exceptional individuals who have made a significant mark in the field of marketing. So first, let me introduce you to Pragya, Chief Marketing Officer at Crompton Greaves. Uh, her impressive career spans across renowned organizations like Castrol, Azanobel, and HPCL. Crompton Greaves, India's leading consumer electrical brand, boosts its legacy of 85 years in its category fans. The next we have Tanvi, digital marketing manager at Forever. Tanvi has worked with impressive brands like Rolex, Reliance Brands, we have Audi and JWT. DBS Forever Mark is a jewelry house offering contemporary design, featuring responsibly sourced diamonds that are hand-selected for its beauty. So welcome, Tanvi. Next, we have Pavit from DSP Mutual Fund, uh, Associated Vice President at DSP. His career has been a notable uh, into organizations like LNT, Yes Bank, and Loyalty Rewards. DSP Mutual Funds, a 25-year-old experienced organization, has been a trusted partner, partner for about investors who are seeking sound investment decisions. So welcome, Pavan. So I welcome Pragya, Pavan, and Tanvi to this panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To start the conversation, uh, my first question is to Pragya. Uh, Pragya, you know, today in the fans category, which is a dominant category for Crompton Greaves, there's so much of competition, you know. Uh, technology has evolved. You have IoT, which is changing the landscape of, you know, commercial uh, landscape for electricals. Uh, there are fans with BLDC uh, technology coming in. So what strategies has uh, enabled Crompton Greaves to, you know, beat this competition and be the first choice for consumers? Thanks. Uh, of course, uh, 
Changes are happening in every sector. Of course, you can't dispute that. But to remain relevant across over the years, you've got a history of 85 years of being a consumer electricals company and also for 85 years holding a leading position in fans. Now, that seems pretty easy most of the time because we assume that, you know, it happens. Uh, it doesn't, right? Technology changes. You have to remain modern, relevant, and conventional, also with a future outlook. Uh, so we invest a lot into innovation. Uh, BLDC is, of course, one technology, but the new age modern consumers and our recent campaign also talks about great aesthetics are looking at that. So gone are the times where the product serves the basic need of the consumer, but the consumers are getting far involved and smarter and the brands have to step ahead. So we invest a lot in technology when it comes to IoT, automation, des great designs. Uh, not only that, uh, with brands like Crompton, who've got a strong, strong legacy, people are aware of the brand, right? And hence the challenge. When we do the campaigns, people ask us, so oh, people know about the brand. So, you know, quite a few times our stakeholders ask that. But then what do we intend to do? Our problem is not awareness. Our problem is intent, right? And hence, you know, going back to where we are today, Cora, that's what it does, right? Capture the high intent consumer, bring in the right content, answer that when the intent is high to form the consideration and preference for the brand. I think that's what we've done over the years. And uh, some of these platforms are, of course, very interesting and engaging, which has got us the right return. So have, have the right conversation with the consumer, with the right consumer at the right time. That's what we've done. That's great, great uh, insights, Praga. You know, 42% uh, of Quora users write uh, product reviews in the last one week. So obviously, people are searching for the right content. And when brands come on, on the platform and answer those queries, it really helps them make a decisive, you know, the right decision to you know, go for the product. So I think, yes, that's a great way to move ahead for. Thank you. Thank you. What you, Disha? Thank you, Nitin. Uh, firstly, thank you for joining us, Pragya, Pavan, and Tanvi. Uh, moving on with the conversation, uh, Tanvi, I would like to ask you, uh, as digital platforms today continue to transform, and so are the consumers uh, you know, evolving as well, especially in the luxury brands segment, how has Forevermark as a brand uh, uh, leveraged its or evolved its marketing uh, strategies to be able to continue engage, engaging with the audiences as well as building a brand loyalty? So, as you said, it's uh, been a, I mean, we're moving to a digital age. I think more than that, it's more like a digital explosion. Uh, and with this digital explosion, um, you know, there's been, I mean, it has resulted in a lot of accessibility. And with this accessibility comes, you know, um, visibility, loyalty from people who haven't even bought into the brand necessarily. So we're creating a much higher um, aspirational audience as well. Um, so while there is the potential customer, there's also a larger segment of an aspirational audience that you're uh, trying to engage with. And uh, I mean, we at Debeers Forevermark today, we're uh, a digitally uh, first uh, organization and I say that confidently because today I can, uh, almost over 60% of our spends, media spends are uh, on digital and uh, we also have been uh, amongst uh, the market leaders in a lot of in, in integrating technology so we don't shy from integrating technology in whatever we do whether it is online or on ground. To give you an example, we've been running campaigns which are like online to offline so we're driving footfalls to our store uh, through content, through online uh, content targeting. So we're creating that seamless connect between online and offline. Uh, we were amongst the first to do virtual try-ons for the jewelry category. Um, you know, we're talking about on ground. Uh, so there's something called as the De Beers Forever Mark Forum. Now these are um, really uh, high class, this is a really high class event that we do, uh, we organize for customers and for trade. And uh, this event has really been um, an example of how we've uh, been integrating technology and you know, using digital uh, innovations um, on ground and giving that experience. Um, also, you know, we were 
during covid we uh, hosted a digitally led event of over a thousand people and uh, it was top notch it was as close to giving an in person brand experience that a brand could possibly give this was combined with like avatars virtual showrooms networking rooms you know conducting business uh, online now all of this we we basically garnered uh, the confidence of an industry which so heavily relies on in person uh, interactions on touch and feel because jewelry as a category is just that so yeah we've done that and we've thrived and we have evolved uh, digitally and we continue to do so so we are always learning <laughs> That's great to hear, Tanvi. I think um, it's very well said that you know brands evolve as consumers evolve. So I think uh, whatever you've just mentioned as your strategy and your approach, uh, with the time changing, with the pandemic, with every revolution that has taken up, uh, all the uh, steps that you have taken and the initiatives that you have taken, whether it's a ground event, whether it's moving from online to offline, I think it's really a great learning for a lot of us, all brands as well as, it's good to know as a consumer as well. So thank you for your uh, insights. So as uh, the topic says consumer behavior, Pavan, you know, my question to you is, uh, as consumer behaviors are shifting today towards digital first approach and in investment because uh, I understand in retail and I understand in other sector but investment when it comes to so there are a lot of behavioral changes and using digital first approach uh, so how has DSP mutual fund adopted to do you know, cater to these new requirements uh, of this new age digital first users who are into investments well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming in and thanks for asking this question. Uh, it provides us with an opportunity to also talk about, uh, uh, you know, how we have shaped over the last uh, decade or so. And uh, I am honored and proud both uh, to talk about that DSP as a brand. Uh, uh, we have about 98% of digitization with us. The 2% which is remaining is our... Uh, I would say reimbursement which we do. <laughs> so, so let's put it like that on that perspective. So we are, uh, I don't know about digital first, but we are, uh, you know, digitally crazy about whatever we want to do has to be uh, on the digital aspect. In terms of coming back to how consumer behaviors is shifting, uh, mutual fund as an industry is mostly governed by people who are around you. It doesn't matter what I talk about in terms of this is the best fund or if this is not the best fund. You will still go and ask somebody whom you really feel uh, that the person holds knowledge, somebody you can rely on from a trust perspective. And how do you build that trust on a digital platform is more important and key to us. And in order to ensure that there are three ways of doing it, uh, we have the right set of content, again, at the right point in time in terms of markets, how they are moving, in terms of geopolitical scenarios, how, how they are shaping up and also providing the right set of information in, in terms of not looking at this is going to be beneficial for the brand, but how is it going to benefit the end investor? Because uh, you are investing your hard-earned money and you expect certain bit of pound returns as well. And we want people to make returns. So in order to ensure uh, you know, the amalgamation of all these aspects, uh, as a brand, we are driving a lot of uh, digital engagements with digital distributors uh, you know, to to name a few, like all of us would have seen a lot of ads like Grow and Upstocks and all. Uh, that's where the you know the younger generation, I would say, are going about. Even generations like you know from my age are are still going there. And uh, we want to be present and uh, not only be present but be there uh, in terms of the content as well as the information which is provided. Apart from our own apps, uh, we recently updated our app uh, about a couple of days ago. I be honest. And uh, we had about 4.5 rating on our app store uh, for our previous app. And we hope to beat that benchmark with the new variant which has launched. And uh, the trend has moved from a web to an app uh, in, in a matter of two years or so, or pre uh, post-COVID, let's put it like that. Uh, it's from 70-30, 70, 70, it's now been you know, 60-40, 40-60 sort of thing. And uh, that's where we are mostly investing into. How do we be present? Uh, on your phone and at the point you want it. Thank, thanks, Pavan, so much. Uh, obviously, there are about 12 million questions on 
Quora itself, regarding finances itself, and uh, you know, digitally people coming up and answering those questions really helps uh, users to you know understand. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, coming back to you, Pragya, uh, as you spoke about content uh, being an important aspect. So how has uh, Crompton Greaves focus on generating content uh, using promoted answers on Quora helped Compton to build uh, a consideration uh, for the brand and you know uh, help you to build a stronger essence towards your brand yeah so I'll take a step back and then sure. come to content and why content and consideration so in our industry in consumer electricals about 80 85 percent evaluation happens online right so the fact that you want to buy a fan let's say even water heater fan comes naturally when it comes to Crompton but let's say water heater about 90% of the evaluation is happening online. But 90% of the sales are actually not happening online, they're happening offline. So by the time the consumer is actually stepping into a store, the top two, three products which he or she has to buy, they've already closed their mind on that, right? Which forms the consideration set. Hence, it becomes very important for so-called traditional brands like us to be present online with the right content, right? And hence that became the task on hand. We've extensively used Quora to understand these key conversations which, or the key queries which the consumer has, right? And build on content in form of blogs, research. I mean, I, I would say we repurposed our entire content strategy based on certain key topics which people want to hear about. What happened as a result of that? Last three years, our website traffic has almost multiplied by six times. We are currently one of the most visited website in our industry. Right? In terms of social media also, we have kind of get the right content out at the right time using moment marketing, a lot of other topics. We are currently the most engaged brand on social media in our industry. Right? What has happened actually, how do we really then, because most often than not, marketers are questioned on the ROIs, right? That's one way of looking at it. The other way is on Quora itself by picking up the right topics and answering them and positioning ourselves as a thought leader, our CTRs have been almost three times of the industry average CTR, right? Because it became very important, one, to ask the right, answer the right questions. Um, with the right answers and make it a little more engaging, you know, put, put in a image, put in videos for people to understand it better, which helped in terms of our overall CTRs. Also because we understand today the Gen Z attention span is reducing by almost 25 to 30 percent almost every year, right? The average attention span is about at eight seconds. How much can you consume in an eight second? If you want to stretch that eight second, it's, uh, it's very, very important to have the right content in the right format. That's what we did, True. Uh, you know, using Quora. And I think it's working well for us. So, and we'll continue to do that. So that's how we've worked around it. Thank that's, you. That's great insight, uh, Pragya. You know, obviously the attention spans are uh, very small right now because we are used to short format videos. Uh, so being at the right time uh, with the right content really helps uh, both the brand and the users. So thanks for sharing that across. Coming back to you, Tanvi, um, since we spoke about the marketing initiatives earlier, uh, what was your strategic approach when you decided to leverage Quora as a platform? Uh, and um, maybe you could tell us a little about what has been your experience uh, with Quora as a platform, mainly to engage with uh, the sophisticated audience uh, set. So. I'll be very honest, uh, we've very actively only started being on Quora for the last year or so. Um, prior to that, of course, while we did some campaigns here or there, um, the, the actual activity began only since last year. Um, we did give it a lot of thought in terms of why we should include Quora. I'll, and uh, of course, when I met Priyanka, uh, she did give uh, me enough and more reasons to uh, you know, start advertising again on Quora. But uh, primarily being, uh, you know, uh, I mean, just a few reasons that I can think of at the top of my mind right now. Uh, primarily being accessibility to a well-informed and a knowledgeable audience. So like we said, you know, uh, 
uh, like Gurmeet just mentioned in his uh, introductory speech, that it is the best platform for answers. So um, there is a huge, um, you know, uh, to get information, to get answers to certain questions, and they're a lot more receptive to when they receive that from brands. So, okay, probably not as knowledgeable, but a curious and an informed uh, audience set is what you're reaching out to. And that also in turn results in a higher engagement and interaction because these guys are really looking out for their answer and when, when the brand is uh, themselves out there and you know, giving you the relevant information, um, they tend to be a lot more engaging, a lot more interactive with the brand. So thereby obviously a higher engagement rate, a higher CTR, so that's one of the reasons. Um, another being, you know, um, like, uh, uh, the lady from NDC mentioned just some time back that, you know, it allows the brand to be a thought leader. Um, people are asking all sorts of questions. Like, we know 90% of uh, the research is all done before a person decides to go ahead and buy jewelry. It's all done online. So people are asking all sorts of questions. And uh, when you as a brand are able to address that, it it uh, you know kind of makes you like a thought leader it also validates uh, and it gives you credibility in terms of your expertise within that field um, so that's one of the other reasons um, and also of course yes whenever you're searching for a question Quora obviously has a very high SEO ranking so it is another avenue for the brand to also get a higher visibility and thereby then uh, click throughs so yeah a couple of reasons that I could think of right now <laughs> I think you have all the reasons now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've pretty much mentioned uh, all the reasons why you should definitely be on Quora uh, now and in future too. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I think Tanvi, uh, in whatever you've mentioned, uh, what I'd like to just add is that Quora is a full funnel platform and uh, the ad formats the are aligned to the goals that brands um, uh, want to cater to or want to aim for at the end of their communications to their users. And yes, it is about being in the right place at the right time because uh, while somebody is searching for um, uh, you know, any kind of um, content to influence their decision making, they are on Quora. So uh, I think um, we're glad to hear that uh, it, you know, these are the few reasons and we'll definitely give you m many more reasons to continue being with, uh, associated with Quora. Thank so you. thank you. So, Bhavan, the last question to you, you know, investment is a, you know, very big topic. Uh, people are so confused and they are doing investments, be it mutual funds, okay? When it comes to mutual funds, uh, people think, should I buy a huge amount of large, large cap uh, funds? Should I do mid cap, do, uh, should I do small cap? So, it's a huge gamut where people still do not have clarity. They source information from different things like you know be it from influencers to blogs to everything so how has Quora helped uh, DSP mutual funds in educating engaging and solving this purpose for DSP mutual funds about this complex topic as investments all right so generally uh, what I generally talk to people in multiple forums is a number of people ask me mutual fund sahi hai ki nahi hai True. And, and uh, if the answer is yes, then which mutual fund is right? And if you answer them, saying, is it the right time to invest? And so many questions come around and these are the top three questions we generally rank, you know, which is best mutual fund, is it the right time and how do you invest into mutual fund? Now these are questions which are, uh, you know, which has the highest ranking in terms of from a search volume perspective. And how has Quora helped us? Quora has a superb score from an EAT perspective. We, we all understand from a marketing perspective what's an EAT. And uh, with the whole Google SQRs, uh, you know, uh, you drive a tremendous amount of volume back to your, uh, I would say, platform as a, as a whole leading thing, which helped us from a SEO optimization from an offsite indication. And uh, what we did differently, I would say, is we didn't go for the content or the con you know uh, what needs to get created because finally Quora is a UGC and and uh, we have our own uh, support system to ensure to answer and provide the right sort of information because that's what we stand for. But apart from that, there is enough and more UGC uh, user generated content which is there. But when that content is being read, because that's where the attention we all you know you know just spoke 
about the attention span of, for videos or static images. But when somebody is reading through it, the attention is supremely higher as compared to others because you are absorbing while reading. And that's where we started, you know, uh, you know, promoting our video ads, our static ads, and the objective was during JFM, uh, how do you save tax? Because that's the time of the year the HRs will come and ask you to submit <laughs> your investments, and uh, we have a fund called DSP ELSS, Equity Linked Savings Scheme. Why don't you invest in that? And people were looking for it that, is it the right thing? How do you save tax? What is ELSS and all? And uh, when you are asking that sort of question and you are there in front of the people more on the contextual side of it and the intent is higher, definitely our conversions were better. Our VTR was about 45%, uh, which according to my understanding is 10% above the normal benchmark compared to the industry we are in. And uh, this has given enough amount of our traffic to our website. And... Uh, we have more number of planned uh, products to be rolled out and I am sure we will definitely adopt not only Cora but the new tool which you launched today. So <laughs> that, that's something which uh, to me sounds very exciting. I'm excited about it and how do, how do I can monetize it? How can we work together in delivering a use case uh, for an industry which is as complicated as mutual fund and highly regulated like mutual fund? So that's it. Thank you. So, so you mean to say ki every movement is a sahi movement to make investments? Sorry? So every movement is a sahi movement to make investments into mutual funds. I, I say that uh, uh, it's not about the moment you invest, it's about when do you want to take out the money. If, if that is the point you are clear in your head, uh, you can invest today itself. Thank, thanks, man. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so I'd like to... Um, uh, talk about a couple of takeaways from today's discussion. Uh, I think in the digital first era uh, where consumer behavior has really evolved and brands are also evolving, we've heard from uh, all three of them. Um, I think sort of takeaways that um, I gather from here is one, there is an influence of social media and influencer marketing. Uh, there is mobile domination. Uh, there is also a rise of e-commerce e and online shopping and purchases, which is um, really booming. And uh, I think it's empowered decision-making for a lot of uh, consumers. So um, they say that the consumers are more connected than ever now. So with that, I would like to conclude uh, today's uh, discussion. I would really like to thank uh, Pragya. Uh, Pavan and Tanvi for joining us on stage today. It has really been a pleasure interacting with uh, all of you. Let us now recognize those who have excelled in their campaigns with our most impactful campaigns on Quora. Universal Business School utilized promoted answers and video ads on Quora to increase brand awareness and visibility. Everybody, can we have a big round of applause for Universal Business School? Now, can we have State Bank of India on stage to accept their honor roll? SBI utilized all ad formats on Quora to drive awareness and consideration and improve the performance on their website. Congratulations, State Bank of India. Narayan will present the honor roll to Crompton. Crompton leveraged promoted answers on Quora to build awareness and consideration for their product line, including fans, air coolers, lights, and water geysers. They were also the first advertiser to utilize PO to repurpose their existing blogs to create content for their promoted answer. Gold Rage Appliances, who has also achieved exceptional results by using Quora. They promoted content through its business profile to enhance awareness and visibility among users actively engaging with appliance related content yes securities congratulations promoted content to increase awareness and visibility among users actively consuming content on investment and finances platinum guild international utilized video ads and promoted answers on quora to build awareness and consideration for platinum jewelry highlighting its unique selling points on roll goes to natural diamond council they utilized all ad formats on Quora to drive awareness and consideration amongst users. Congratulations. Kotak Mutual Fund leveraged image ads on Quora to drive performance, resulting in a more efficient cost per lead.
HSBC mutual fund leverage co content marketing through their business profile on Quora to increase interactions and drive engagement on the page. IDFC First Bank leverage image ads on Quora to drive quality traffic to their website. Everybody get a big, big, big round of applause for IDFC First Bank. Nerolac also used image ads on Quora to drive high quality leads, achieving a 10% improvement in cost per quality lead in just three months. That's incredible. Forever Mark leveraged image and video ads on Quora to reach out to users interested in jewelry, driving awareness about the latest jewelry collection, Avanti. Mirai Assets leveraged image ads on Quora to drive performance and traffic to their website. Congratulations. LIC, the brand leveraged image ads on Quora to drive quality traffic to their website. Congratulations, Tata Capital. The brand leveraged all ad formats on Quora to drive awareness, consideration, and performance on their website. Cortex Securities leveraged co content marketing through its business profile on Quora to increase interactions and drive engagement. Ultratech leveraged promoted answers to establish themselves as a thought leader in the category on Quora. Amazon Prime Video! Amazon Prime Video leveraged image and video ads to increase the visibility and awareness of their show on the Prime app. Everybody, let's give a big round of applause. ICICI Direct! Everybody, big round of applause for ICICI Direct. DSP Mutual Funds utilize both image and video ads to drive traffic and increase awareness for its Bachao campaign. Aditya Birla Capital leveraged image ads on Quora to drive leads for business loans at an efficient cost per lead. Congratulations, Aditya Birla Capital. Congratulations to each and everyone. Well done. Keep up the great job at Quora, of course, on Quora. Okay, so as our formal proceedings come to a close, I would like to invite on stage Neha Chimbolkar, our Head of Marketing, Quora, APAC and EMEA to share a few closing remarks and extend our gratitude to all participants and attendees. Everybody welcome on stage, Neha. Hi everybody, I'm just the one keeping you away from your drink, so I'll keep it short. Uh, as we bring this vibrant evening to a close, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to each one of you for joining us today at Koraverse, you know, our Mumbai event, Unlocking Knowledge for Impact. Your active participation has been the cornerstone of today's success. From our energizing pre-networking interactions to the insightful keynote on marketing in the age of AI and interesting panels discussing brand loyalty, consumer behavior in the digital age, each moment has been pivotal today for us. Your engagement with these topics have sparked important conversations and laid the groundwork for future innovations. The special presentation from Access Life has reminded us the powerful role we all play in broader community engagement and social responsibility. The highlight of the evening for me is the, our recognition of the most impactful campaigns on Quora, showcasing the innovative strategies that brands have implemented on Quora, underscoring the dynamic ways in which the platform can be leveraged to drive meaningful engagement and results. We are also immensely grateful to the wonderful collaboration with Social Samosa, whose partnership has significantly enhanced this event. The contribution has been instrumental in bringing this gathering to life. And thank you so much, team. We are looking forward to doing more such events and sharing knowledge. I hope the sessions provided you with valuable insights that the connections made here today inspire new collaborations and ideas. And please look out for the follow-up communication where we will share key takeaways and additional resources from today's discussions. And if you already haven't downloaded the PO app, the one-month trial QR code is on your table, as Vinay mentioned. Please scan that, send us your information, and we'll be happy to extend the one-month free trial for PO. Thank you once again for your valuable presence, which has made this event a rich symposium of ideas and insights. We look forward to welcoming you to future Quora events and continuing our knowledge of sharing impact together. Enjoy the rest of your evening. So everybody, before we go for that, I would like to invite all our attendees, all our guests, everyone to come on stage for the group photo.